Folks, welcome back to my channel. And today we'll be doing something a bit different because we are going to be designing a business car instead of the usual RPG stuff. And this business car is gonna be for a local pianist who happens to be my friend. He is paying me for it though, technically. I'm not accepting any money though because I owe him money. Okay, so we have this design here, which is a preliminary design I made a while back for Tim. Um, off his personal information are temporarily changed out for placeholders. I won't use actual information for a YouTube video, obviously. Um, well, unless he wants me to. Maybe he's dead desperate for work. Hopefully not. Anyway, this design is interesting, but I'm thinking maybe we could push that out. This is a lot further and provide alternatives. First of all, we're going to hit Tim's website here. And he has a bunch of photos that he's giving me permission to use, if appropriate, for his business card. So, his requirements was his desire for the card is really to communicate both professionalism but also his artistry, emphasis on the artistry. But you can't be too artistic or too out there because then, you know, parents of potential students don't want to hire you. They expect they have a certain idea of what a pianist and a musician is like. But at the same time, he wants to stand out, right, to show a bit more of his character and personality. So, out of these photos, obviously we're not going to use just the pianos, that's boring. So having two grand pianos is, is a flex, for sure. This photo is too boring, I would say, because he's in the middle, and that's not an interesting photo. You know, rule of thirds and all that. This one is too professional, in my opinion. Um, he's sitting, nice, everything, it's actually not bad, but this one, I think, is probably the most interesting out of all of them, right? There's dynamic posing, it follows rule of thirds, it shows both grand pianos, and he's not wearing socks, which I think demonstrates a certain levity and uh, artistic persona. Probably what we need. But let's go ahead and grab that photo. Okay. Kind of blurry because we're not using uh, overprint preview, which I'll turn on now. Move that down a bit. We don't need to show that much feet, you know? It's not really a purpose. Maybe we should show the feet? I don't know. How much levity do people need? Plenty. So I think the photograph uh, is pulling a lot of weight for us. So we probably only want to focus on typography. Keep this simple. I'm just being arbitrary here with my font and everything because I haven't set up what I want to do yet. What type base should we use? Let's do Chromatic SC. Always one of my favorites. You can always change the sizes and kerning and leads and all that stuff later. Do that. Quick and dirty. I want to get our information down. Musicianship coach and multimedia poet. I'm also a multimedia poet myself. You know, nowhere near as skilled, but flex. And you know, I don't include capitalizations if I don't have to, because I think capitalizations are overrated, especially when it comes to nice design. But not my preference, capitals. I used to be really obsessed with proper capitalization and all that stuff, but as I've aged, I've gotten more chill, as they say. Probably also my ADD forcing me to be like a grammar Nazi, but then I was like, you know what? I don't like that. I want to be more liberated, and I have become more liberated, so that's always nice. All right, let's lower the opacity on that. A bit darker, but not too dark. It makes the white stands out more. We can always edit the image as well later. You know, I might go for black and white. I don't usually use the PC when designing, so some shortcut key confusion here, but so good now. Nice, happy colors. Not sure I'm going with that, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Hey, blah 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 at gmail.com.
What can I do to make this more interesting? I have an idea. Well, I'm gonna see if that works. Okay, we have popped the picture up in Photoshop because we're gonna now do some interesting editing. And I have this crazy idea when I was designing that layout before on what I can do to make it interesting. I don't know if it's good or bad, but we're gonna find out. First of all, let us cut out Tim from the background. Okay, decent enough. Copy a layer via copy. Okay, so now we have a perfect copy of him cut out. More or less. Black space out of the fingers. It's probably not necessary with what I have in mind, but why not? And I don't think that's really necessary. Then we return to InDesign. Okay, we're back in InDesign. I am. I'll replace that. There we go. Okay. Voila. Now he's extending into 3D space. Kind of. There's just one problem with that. I don't like how the hand looks. Feet looks fine though. Blocking his contact info, so we probably don't want that. I want to make sure that this, the words are above everything else. Yeah, so I probably shouldn't name my layers at some point, but again, I'm still in the kind of like throwing crazy idea at a walls mode. I'm too lazy to do that at the moment, but organization. If not right away, then sooner or later it would be better. Yeah, I want to preserve the hand for that right here, but I want this to extend over this area. So it's okay if his fingers are sticking through, right? There we go. There we go. His fingers are sticking through, but the majority of it is still on the piano. Thus completing the 3D effect. Okay. I like it. Kind of. Hard to please oneself because I'm such a perfectionist. Yeah, this could now go all the way down here. And if the car was this small, how would that look? People usually look at business cards pretty close up, so it's not as much of a concern. So that's another thing about legibility and resolutions. Viewing distance matters. For example, highway billboards are typically very uh, pixelated. They're very low resolution, but because you're so far away, uh, it looks just fine. So when you're designing for posters or whatever, you have to consider the distance the audience will be seeing that at. And that would impact how much DPI and resolution would be required. Because a lot of people, they they just embed like entire photos in their design. They go for files that are like gigabytes big. And there's no need for something like that. It makes it really hard to print sometimes. Depending on the network of your local printers. Okay, so we got that, we got that, we got that. This is contact info, which I'll fill in the actual one. Oh, QR code, yes, that was in my original design as well. So for this new one, we'll do the exact same thing. No, I'm gonna create a whole new layer for it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's go to objects, generate QR code. I'm gonna have to plug in a... Uh... Now for the placeholder, I'm just gonna plug in my own itch.io. Uh, Website, web page, where you can download my RPGs and PDFs and games and stuff like that. I have lots of free stuff. Check it out. And of course, that's black, so we want to make sure your QR code is white. They say there's one error, so that's almost certainly something wrong. The text box right here. There we go. It's too big. Okay, you know what? That is too big. Let's go four. Okay, I know I like I like this. I will sit on this and consider what what changes I can make or improvements I can make. I'll also show Tim uh, this in a bit and see what he thinks about it. I'll let it stew overnight and then reconsider how I might want to do this tomorrow morning. Okay, so here is the evolution on my previous idea. Uh, first of all, I am going to make it. Black and white. Yes, we're gonna try black and white because I think that makes the car gives the car more of a unified look. Ooh, do, 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 do. White, maximum black is fine. We don't want to take attention away from Tim there. Okay, time for some alternatives.
And we are done. And he likes it. Thanks for watching. Do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.